Hello, everybody. Good evening on December the 13th, 2023, the last 13th that we'll see this year. Amen. So I don't know about you guys, but uh, it's gone fast. It is just crazy. Yeah, talk to us. Say amen over there. Yeah. Amen. And so, anyway, I am I'm just honored that you guys join us tonight and the guys that are here tonight, and we're just so so thankful that you're here. And um, uh, that we've got some that are out of town, so we, uh, we speak blessing over them. And, um, uh, you know, Pastor Debbie sends her love. Just a couple of quick announcements, just so uh, uh, you guys will be getting this. Uh, there was a little bit of confusion about some things, and so I just want to be the one to clarify it. Uh, we will be having a Christmas Eve service. It will be at 9 o'clock, and it's going to be just a, uh, uh, a time where, you know, it's an intimate time. It's not a normal service. We're asking people to bring their uh, favorite Christmas breakfast dish or just a breakfast dish, and uh, we'll have some, some music. It won't be live music, and we'll have uh, some scriptures, and we'll have some prayer time, and probably do communion, but it, nobody needs to feel obligated to be there. All they need to do is just, if you don't have family going on or something to that effect, you know, come and worship with us that morning. Amen? And so, it's been corrected. Okay. So, that's, uh, just wanted everybody to to hear that and so uh, uh, there was just some some confusion on that so we got it clarified and uh, tonight we're blessed uh, because you're here but we're also blessed because uh, we got I, I call him Reverend Bobby Lord uh, I don't know if he likes me to do that or not he's not never told me not to so uh, that's what I call him and uh, he, he is ordained and you know been used of God for many many years and so Tonight we're going to be blessed with uh, with the word that the Lord has given him for us for this season and for this time. Amen? Yeah. So again, we welcome you. Welcome you, those that are online. And uh, I'm going to turn it over and let uh, Reverend Bobby, let him pray over everything and do what needs to be done. Amen. Amen. Take charge, my brother, from another mother. Yes, sir. I love you too, man. God bless you, man. Bless you. Good evening, everybody. Good, good, good to see you guys. Everybody online, welcome. I told my wife, I said, this is going to be the shortest message I've ever done or the longest. We're going to see how it goes. You can tell I preached out of this Bible a lot. It's falling apart, so I feel comfortable carrying it around with me. <laughs> and I'm breaking in a new one. So <laughs> we're going to see how this really goes. Ah, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, I thank you for this day. This is the day, Lord God, that you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it, Father. Regardless of what's going on around us, we know that you're in it. And I thank you, Father. I thank you for everyone that's here, everyone that's tuned in online. Father, those that are not here that are traveling, I pray for traveling mercies and safety. Father, those that are not with us, for health reasons, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we reach out and speak healing, Father, into their bodies and restoration that they may be back with us, Lord. We thank you for this time together. Pray you bless it. And thank you again, Lord God, for this day in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey, bud, we're going to play. <laughs> huh? okay. <sighs> okay. I got a ton of scriptures, and I'm just going to see if I'm going to use them all. We're going to see how it flows. I told my wife, I said, I don't know what I'm going to do because the Lord has not laid anything on my heart. But Terry, Pastor Terry dropped a bomb on me like two minutes ago. But, just <laughs> but anyway, Hosea 4 6, if you're taking notes. Just make note of these because hopefully by the time we finish up here, this will all make some sense. 
It does, at least it did to me. Hosea 4, 6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because thou hast rejected knowledge. I will also reject thee. That's the King James Version. Knowledge can be defined as reaction, skill, discernment, understanding, wisdom. And if you would, I'm not going to turn to Deuteronomy 28. I don't know why you bring a new Bible to minister out of. And when you haven't got it broken in real good, and the pages still stick, so I'm just going to stick to the phone right now. <laughs> Deuteronomy 28. I'm old school, I guess. Uh, I use the King James Version most of the time. Nothing wrong with the other translations. I just like this one. And it shall come to pass, if, if thou shalt hearken diligently, unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments which I command thee this day that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth and all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God blessed shall thou be in the city blessed shalt thou be in the field blessed shalt thou be shall be the fruit of thy body and the fruit of thy ground, and the fruit of thy cattle, the increase of thy kind, and the flocks of thy sheep. Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. Blessed shall be thou when thou comest in, and blessed shall thou be when you go out. The Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way and flee seven ways. The Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses and in thy and all that thou settest thine hand to do. All that you set your hand. Think about that. Just make a note, Irvin. All that you set your hand to do. It all means it's all inclusive. It means all. I've broken it down several ways and I still come up with the same thing. All that you set your hand unto, and he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. The Lord shall establish thee as a holy people unto himself, as he has sworn unto thee, if thou shalt keep the commandments, if you shall keep the commandments, if you shall keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his ways. And all people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of thee. And the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods, in the fruit of thy body, in the fruit of thy cattle, and the fruit of thy ground, and the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers to give thee, the Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure, the heaven to give the rain unto thy land in his season, and to bless all the work of thine hand. And thou shalt lend to many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. The Lord will make thee the head and not the tail. Thou shalt be above only and not beneath. If thou hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day to observe and to do them, and thou shalt not go aside from any of my words, which I command thee this day, to the right or to the left, to go after other gods to serve them. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. And we can go through the curses, but if I would encourage you, I won't take the time. If you will read through them, you'll find the majority of the diseases and problems that we see running rampant in our nation and around the world. You'll see them mentioned in the curses. They are there. Uh, and you can see at that point, you know that God wasn't kidding. He meant what he said. <sighs> okay. Matthew six thirty three. Seek ye first the kingdom, his kingdom, and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Seek ye first the kingdom. Now, tell me what's different 
in the New Testament version and the Old Testament version. Not a whole lot. He said the same thing in a shorter, shorter verse. Seek ye first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Y'all, and Pastor Terry knows, and, and you guys hang around along, you'll figure out that I'm more, I guess I fall, I, I, I've never categorized you. Maybe I need to check you out a little bit more so I can categorize you. <laughs> but I fall in, I'm more the word of the faith, word of faith type, and I think Pastor Terry is too. That's, uh, you know, I came up, my God, uh, Kenyon and, and uh, Pastor uh, Hagen and, uh, oh, my God, so many others, uh, Ch- Caps and uh, Lester Summerall and Oral Roberts. And that's that's my generation of ministers and pastors and evangelists and prophets. And that's what I grew up with. And that's what I kind of gravitated to. Now, uh, you know, the, back then, you know, the Baptists were always saying, you know, y'all, and they were saying, y'all need to get saved over there in the Baptist church. But, you know, the Baptist has done a lot. You can't bang the Baptist, you know, because those folks are soul winners. You know, just, you were you were one. Uh, you were one. I, it, and just bless God, we got you changed over. She's a Holy Ghost roller now. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah, sir. She was one. I'm just thankful. I'm thankful that mom and daddy carried me and started out in the church of God and uh, moved over to Pentecostal church. You know, so all I've ever known is speaking in tongues, rolling in the floor and shouting and running and hollering and preaching the word. You know, that's just, that's the way I was brought up. Uh, and I, I don't apologize for it. I'm proud of it. You know, I, I use proud, you know, you, you, pride goes before a fall. So <laughs> So seek ye first the kingdom of God and all, 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 all these things will be added to you. Now, a lot of people will tell you that, well, that's Old Testament, Deuteronomy. Why Why are you going to start out something with the Old Testament? Because, you know, the, the old laws passed. We're under the new covenant. Well, no, we're in the completed covenant because Christ came and fulfilled the old covenant. And now we flow and minister and function under the entire, the entire complete covenant, complete. And I've I've been that I've been reading and studying this for a while, and um, it's exciting to know that God didn't drop off one. You just you still got all these blessings that just come right along with us in the new in the new covenant, and then you build on that. With even we don't have to go through the priest now. We just go to Jesus, Holy Spirit. I, you know, go to our own our own high priest that walks with us daily. We don't have to get all cleaned up and and uh, un, and undefiled and all that stuff to go to the temple to see the priest. You know, we just if you like me, most of the time I find a closet or a place around the house somewhere and sit down. Lord God, I need you. <laughs> you know, I got to have some help today here. I'm choking, Lord. I need you. Um, I want to throw this out. Joshua, y'all know I love Joshua. I talk about Joshua a lot. Joshua chapter 7, uh, the battle of Ai. Joshua had gone in. They had just routed Achan, you know, just ran right through them, you know, like water through a sieve. And then they go to Ai. And, you know, I keep, why did, Lord, why, why? But I haven't found yet. But I think maybe Joshua should have said, Lord, should I do this? Uh you know, because he sends out these spies and they're like, oh man, we don't need but a handful. Let us go over and, and take care of business here. Where on, you know, I'm thinking, if he had said, Father, should I? Father probably would have said, my child, you need to check the camp because something's wrong. But I think, you know, I'm not judging Joshua. I'm just saying, we know what happened. They got their hineys handed to him in short order. Uh, and it didn't look good on him. And and then Joshua wrenched his clothes and he's like, My God, what happened here? You promised me this and you promised me that. And he said, Yeah, but you got sin in the camp. And just a little bit of sin just about 
just brought the whole nation to their knees. <laughs> I mean, they were all weeping and crying and throwing sand and, you know, just, oh God, what happened, what happened, what happened when they didn't observe what Abba told them to do. And observation of what the Lord tells us to do or lack thereof is what gets us in most of the messes we get into. It also is what will get us out of a lot of our messes we get ourselves into because we do have a gracious Father now and thank God for His grace. Let's go to Psalms chapter 1. Blessed, blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. Now, for those that would get offended at the Old Testament reading, you can say in God's word right there instead of the law, if you prefer, because it's all the same thing. Uh, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Now, what did God tell Joshua to do? Day and night. And I, that's exactly right. And and he obviously, something slipped by. And it's, I mean, stuff gets by all of us. I mean, we know none of us walk perfect, except maybe Pastor Terry. But uh, 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 anyway, meditate, 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 meditate. And we all know meditate means mumbling to yourself, reciting the scripture to yourself, keeping it before you, keeping it in your heart. Listening to it at night, listening to it at work, and uh, meditate. You meditating in the scriptures, other than time and prayer with the Holy Spirit. I don't. I don't know. You're getting any better than that. Combining the two, uh, you have to do that to get to achieve what needs to be achieved. And when you do that, you shall be like a tree planted by rivers of water. And if you look that up, it means a tree intentionally planted by watered canals. Intentionally planted. So you choose, you make the choice, do you, where are you going to plant yourself? How are you going to plant yourself? Uh, the rivers of living waters where I want to be planted by. Uh, you shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth his fruit, your fruit, your fruit in your season. What is your season? Your course of life. The course of time you walk with Father. That is your course of life. And it says, you will bring forth fruit in this season. If you take delight in His law, if you meditate day and night, then you will be like a tree planted by... Them. What that's telling me is, you can't ever get enough. You can't get too much Jesus you can't get too much word I went and stopped in a place that I um, I purchased a uh, particular kind of fuel to, to go in my machines and stuff And the guy knows me well he's known me about all my life he knows my brother and uh, he asked me he said How, how's your brother doing I tell you he's doing good uh, he's still. He said, "Is he still pastor?" And I said, "Yeah, he's still pastor." And he said, "He said I like your brother, but he said, man, I'll tell you what, he's he's got that Jesus disease." And I said, uh, "And what's the matter with having a Jesus disease?" I almost called his name. <laughs> Somebody around here might know it. I said, "What's the matter with having a Jesus disease?" Well, I I I I I, I didn't mean no. I, I said. Just take my money, and you—you you know, you—I wouldn't say any more because you already dug a hole. <laughs> you know, what's the matter? You know, people look down on Christians are looked down on more now and treated worse now than they were when I was a kid coming up. You know, used to pastors were respected, Christians were respected, uh, ministers of the gospel, evangelists—I mean, they were respected whether you agreed with them or not. I mean, even the politicians respected them, and now. You know, in the back channels, they're trying to shut it all down. Let's just face facts. That's the case. That's what they're trying to do. But as long as this word is here and it's living and alive in you and I and we're breathing it, they can't stop it. They can't shut it down. They cannot. 
They cannot. Okay. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. And that man shall be like a tree planted by rivers of water that bringeth forth fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither. Shall not wither. And whatsoever he shall do will prosper. Now, what does that word prosper mean? Well, I'll encourage you to take the time to go back to Genesis 39 and read about Joseph. Joseph was mistreated by his brothers about the age of between 16 and 17. Uh, they intended to kill him. One of the brothers said, no, 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 don't. He's daddy's favorite boy, you know. And I think he intended on rescuing Joseph, and that didn't pan out. So anyway, before he could get back to him, they sold him into slavery. Anyway, running on down the road, by the time he was 30, he had been promoted. You know, and he was working at Potiphar's house and then the wife lied on him and he back in prison again and next thing you know he's running Egypt but everything even when he was in prison he prospered he was the the Lord the presence of God was so much in him that the keeper of the prison elevated him man I trust you I just put you in charge of all this and take some of the load off of me That's prosperity. But it's not only favor. If you'll search that out, he's got filthy rich. And there's nothing wrong with wealth. There is nothing wrong with wealth. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish blessed is the man whose delight is in the law of the Lord meditating day and night communing with the father spending time you cannot have enough time with father God I I find out the older I get I, I guess the biggest regrets I got are not having spent more time. More time in prayer. More time seeking Him. More time pursuing the things of the Lord. Because I see now in pursuing the things of God I don't have to look for work. It runs me down. I don't have to worry about, you know, it, that kind of, it just, you know, normally you would say, well, it's Christmas, you know, coming up. You're not going to have anything to do in December and January. I, I'm already into the spring and got two calls today and had to tell people, listen, I can't even look at your job till January, you know, just and so, and I'm not patting me on the back. I'm just saying, if you want to move on, if you want to be, prosperous in all everything mama daddy i mean all grandma grandpa it doesn't matter if you will apply what god's word tells you to apply it works it works i'm a big believer and as i said in the word of faith i if i get a hold of something you're not going to take it away from me. Yeah. You know, I, I, you can confess your way. If you've got the word in there, you can, what you say, you're going to get. Amen. It's going to happen. Yeah. Come or high water, it's going to happen. And you can't stop it. All you got to do is just, just speak it continuously. Just speak it because you believe it. The more you speak it, the more you believe it. The more you believe it, the more you're going to speak it. So therefore, you're calling it in and you're calling it in. And I have seen a lot of bad things happen doing that. I've had bad stuff happen to me because I said something. And get in the middle of something and say, God, what in the world? And the Holy Spirit quickened me just that quick and said, you said, don't you remember? So now every morning when I leave the house and Don and I pray, Father, I thank you for your presence and your favor, Holy Spirit, that goes before me. I thank you 
Father God, that we are blessed coming in and going out. I thank you for your spirit that goes before me. I thank you for your favor that goes before me. And it works. It works. How, how do I know it works? Why, you tell me if it's not God, why you give somebody a bill for $27,000 and they smile and write you a check and give you an envelope, you go out of the truck and it's full of $100 bills. Wow. Above. 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 Amen. That has happened on every job we've done for months. And all we do is we keep to ourselves. We're polite. We have the word playing. We're in a little boom box thing we carry around with us. Keep it low where we can hear it. But bless God, when we go in, the Lord goes with us. Amen. It works. The word works. This word works if, if you apply it. Now, if you apply it and you wonder why you're having problems, you know, you shouldn't have, you won't have problems if you apply it. I should have said if you don't apply it and you avoid it and you don't ever read the word, you don't think about what you say, you don't think about what you take in, then you wonder why bad things happen. Just, just a thought, you know, just, just a thought. Psalms 23. I'm going to get somewhere here, Pastor Terry, shortly, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> the Lord, Jehovah, is my shepherd. I shall not want. Now, if you want to break that down, break it down just a little bit. The Lord is my provider. I shall not lack in any good thing. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. Pastures of tender grass. You know, a cow will gore you to get out of an old pasture to a fresh, green, tender grass pasture. They know a good thing when they see it. Yeah. He leads me beside the quiet waters, the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for His name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Now, how many people do you know that don't get scared? you got to be walking. you got to be walking close to Papa. And know, you've got to know that you know that this word is true and that this word works. In this day and time, it does. In this day and time especially. I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. The rod for protection and the staff to guide. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. We know the oil represents the Holy Spirit. My cup runneth over. Surely, surely, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of Jehovah for length of days or forever. We have to apply the word and you can go back and you can start i like doing this when i do my prayer time in the mornings lord is my shepherd i shall not want because philippians 4 19 tells me that my god father you supply all of my needs according to your riches and glory you can find the new testament verses to go with these and you can just you know you can you can build on it however you how however you desire but that's what i like to do in my prayer time and some of the psalms and some of the proverbs and i have a list i do every morning I declare the word over my wife and myself and my home and my business. I release the word in faith and I have my time. And I'm going to tell you people, it works. I can tell you that getting in fear works. I told you a year ago, I had a booming business. I made millions of dollars until the economy downturn and I got scared. I got scared. And it, I didn't lose everything. I lost a lot of, I lost a ton of money, but I didn't lose my house. I didn't lose my wife. I didn't lose my kids. Uh, when you go to from making millions of dollars to a few dollars, yeah. it gets your attention 
fast. Fast. And you start checking up. And you know, dumb as a rock here, it took me a long time to catch on. It took me, and I had been pastoring, ministering, do student ministry for years, and it took me a while to catch on. Why did it take me so long to catch on? I knew the word. I just didn't know the word. I used to tell the kids that's the longest 18 inches there are in the world. Yeah. I knew it here. But it wasn't living in here, not like it should. And you know what? It's gone, and there's nothing I can do about it. But you know what? My Lord told me that everything that the enemy has stolen from me has to be repaid. Seven. Sevenfold. 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 I just wanted to encourage you this, just to apply some of this stuff. It's You can, go, you can go jump to the next ch couple chapters over under the oh Lord, do I lift my soul when I do that every morning? God, if there's anything in me, show me Holy Spirit. Yeah. I don't want to go out with bitter judgment or bad thought. I, I want to. You're, you're going to. We're going to. Uh, I told Pastor Terry to leave that chair there and I almost tripped over it. <laughs> We're, it's, uh, it's kind of like putting money in a savings account. If you say you got a, which is a joke now, but say you got 10% interest and you put $100 in there, how long is it going to take you for that $100 to make a 1000 if you don't put anything else in there? It's going to take a long time. Yeah. But with the Lord's interest rate, mm -hmm. and then when you put this in the bank, it grows fast. Yeah. Yeah. It grows fast. Yeah. And you get confident. You don't worry about things. You get confident, not in yourself and your ability, but you get confident in him and what he's going to do. Knowing that his word cannot lie. Yeah. You've got to know that. You can you know it here. You've got to get it here to get it here. But if you let it stay here, you're in trouble. Yeah. You're in trouble if you let it stay there. You've got to get it here because when it gets in here, it comes alive. Yeah. And it'll start rolling just like how many mornings do I get up between three and four and I can't go back to bed and it's and it's just what do you want to say you know I'm, I'm listening you know or, or you know where do I need to get into word or what do I need to do and but I and I said it earlier I wish to God I'd have caught this at 13 you know but I didn't but he will make up the time he will make up the time. He will make up the time. Let me read you another one. Psalms 91. Mm. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. Surely, surely He shall deliver me. I now... I say me instead of thee, and when it gets on down here, I put my name in it. I make it personal. I make it for me because he's speaking to me. And if you'll do it that way, he's talking to you. Uh, Surely he shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover me with his feathers, and under his wings shall I trust. His truth shall be my shield and buckler. Now, if you do a little bit of study, a shield, most of the Roman soldiers wore their a little shield on their uh, forearm here, and it had uh, pricks on it. You know, if you hit somebody with that thing, you're going to put a world of hurt on them. Now, a buckler means something surrounding. You ever watched Ben Hur, the old movies where the Romans get attacked, and all the the shield, the big shield bearers that bear the big shields in front of the soldiers, when there's a ton of arrows coming in, all the soldiers get in a huddle. They throw their arms up with that little shield, and then all the other guys with the big shields, the armor bearers, they bring those big shields around them, and they're totally protected by metal. Right. 
He is our shield. He is our surrounding, 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 covering. He keeps us. He keeps us. I shall not be afraid by the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flies by day. And there's a ton in here you could break down. The fiery darts, the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor for the destruction it wastes at noonday. A thousand shall fall at my side and ten thousand at my right hand, but it shall not come nigh me. Only with my eyes shall I behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because I have made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, my habitation. And I just bumped the microphone. I apologize, Pastor Jerry. There shall no evil befall me, neither shall any plague come nigh my dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over me to keep me in all my ways. They shall bear me up in their hands, lest I dash my foot against a stone. I shall tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragon. Shall I trample under feet? Now the Lord speaks. Because Bobby has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set Bobby on high because he has known my name. Bobby shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Amen. you got to make the word personal. you got to believe that it's for you. And I know all of us in here do. But I'm hoping that somebody online. Yeah. Will grasp. And a life. Will be changed. Because when you make it real to you. Mm -hmm. And it comes alive in you. Yeah. Nobody's going to talk you out of it. Amen. Nobody. Nobody's going to talk you out of it. Right. Not at all. <laughs> Proverbs 3 is a good one to read. I read that one every morning. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean on your own understanding. Don't look at what you got going on. Don't look at what's going on around you. But look to the Father and let Him guide you. Don't worry about it. For length of days and long life and peace. Length of days, long life and peace. Of what happens when we keep His word. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them on the tablet of thine heart. So shall you find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct thy paths. Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It shall be health. This is a word picture for you. It shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. If you break that down, it says, it shall be medicine to thy navel and moisture to your bones. So the picture that I got is an infant in the womb with the umbilical cord being. That's the same way the word is for us. That infant has not a care because mama's taking care of that baby. We can live like that because we know Abba is taking care of us. Amen. But it's all in how we look to him and how we trust him and how we believe him. Can you turn loose of what you think needs to be and depend on what he says needs to be? If that happens, honor the Lord with all, with all our substance and with the first fruits without increase, our barns will be filled with plenty. Our presses will burst forth with new wine. See, every time, every time you take a step, he takes several. Every time you move toward him, you just open up another blessing. You just open up more favor. Because, now, you, don't get me wrong. You can't just, well, I'm going to get next to God so I can get what I want. It don't work like that. He's smarter than that. You've got to love him. You've got to cherish him. And you've got to be willing to turn it all loose. And when you get to that point, he starts putting it all back. In greater quantities, greater blessings. It's all there my son do not despise the chastening of the lord neither be weary of his correction for whom the lord loves he corrects even as a father the son in whom he delighteth happy is the man that finds wisdom and the man that gets understanding for the merchandise of it is better the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver and the gain of fine gold 
Mm, 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 mm. You can go on and, and read that entire chapter. That's one that I feel like that I have to read virtually every morning because it, it, it gets my mind set. It keeps me in between the banks, I guess to say. Uh, mm, mm, mm. One thing that we do not do, I say we, I'm going to say as a whole, the church, folks in the church, people that are hanging on around the church and people that are in the church, we do not exercise our kingdom authority. Not like we can, not like we should. We have authority over our lives based on this word. All you got to do is confess the word over your life, over your family, over your business, over your situation, over the church, which I know you guys do. We have the authority. It's been given to us. God will permit what we permit. He's not going to go over your head. He's told you what he's told us what we have to do for him to move and for his word, his word to act and become life to us. Luke ten nineteen says, Behold, I've given you authority to tread over the serpents and the scorpions, over the power of the enemy, and nothing, nothing will harm you. Nothing. Nothing. I looked it up. Nothing still means nothing. Nothing. You know, nothing. Our words, our words, or the light thereof, set everything in motion that concern us in our life, our family, our walk with the Lord. We can talk ourselves right out of our salvation or we can talk ourselves deeper and deeper and deeper into it, our walk with the Lord, confessing the word, meditating in the word, reminding ourselves of the word, reminding ourselves of the promises, reminding ourselves that our God is a covenant God, and as long as we walk in covenant with Him, He can't break it. Amen. If the covenant's broken, it's because we broke it. And if you don't understand covenant, research it. It's and a good way to research covenant is um, bring it way down here on the plain level. You heard of the Indians and the white man who used to do the blood brother thing, you know, blood to blood, take an oath and exchange gifts same thing as a covenant that meant if you ever need me my brother you send for help and i'll be there and the indians would say my brother if you need to pass through if you need protection if you need this if you need that let us know we're there for you because once you became blood brothers you signed a covenant in blood christ was our blood covenant signature god can't go back he can't change we may walk away from it but that don't change the fact that the covenant's there and it's real. Amen. It doesn't change it. And it will not change. So like I said a moment ago, we have authority over our lives. We have authority over the things that concern us. We're created in the Father's image and His likeness. And when we accept Him and we live in this Word and we speak this Word, it works. It works. I say it as in the word it, but you can't say he works. Because his word's already set in motion. And based on what we do, the Holy Spirit automatically brings to pass what Abba promised, or it's just held up because we're speaking or doing or saying or moving in the wrong direction. He ain't gonna bless a drunk man for drinking. You know, <laughs> now if you're drinking a new wine, that's a different thing. I'm talking about the Holy Spirit wine. You know, um, we have authority over our lives because we are created in His image. We are created in His image. When people look at us, they watch us, they observe us, they need to see the Word, the living Word, Jesus, in action. We should be an example. We should be a living example. If you wear the name Christian or profess to be a God lover or a pursuer, you need to be an example. You should be. An, well, you're going to be an example. People are going to know whether you is or you ain't. 
you know, it, your, your life, your actions, your reactions tell a more tell more of a story than just about anything you could say. How you handle situations. To have uninterrupted victory in our lives, we must consistently exercise our authority over our domain, over our dominion, what God has given us. What he's given us is here and now. Here and now. We can control in the spirit. Not manipulate people. But if we're doing what this word says we should do, we can pray and ask. And Jesus said in Matthew, if I'm not mistaken, that if you ask in faith, in my name, anything, and I can go to it, it says anything, I will do it. I will do it. Faith responds to the word, but the faith don't work without the word. And your words, they'll work without faith. You don't have to believe what you're saying is going to happen, but you say it long enough in the wrong direction. Just wait and see. Just wait and see. You know, if you consistently worry, worries, worries face to the negative side. It, go, it goes to the negative side really quick. Faith is the positive side. Don't make no difference what's going on. I know God's got me. I know he's got this covered. And though I can't see it, he sees it, and we're going to be good. Instead of, oh, my God, what are we going to do? We're going to have to borrow money. We're going to have to do this. We're going to have to do that. I'm not going to borrow no money. I'm going to move in, Pastor Terry. On, no. <laughs> yes, Lord. God developed this world, set this thing up, brought everything in this here and here, and he made a man. Now, God used that flesh man. That's how he got into this world. He can't change. He's who he is. He operates on his word. So he created Adam. So he had, that's the gate here. Adam, the flesh man. He gave Adam authority over this land, over this world. Whatever he spoke happened. Whatever he named got named. I'm less, I mean, he had it made. He had, I mean, if there was, you know, it, I mean, it was, you couldn't get much better than that. And, you know, think about it, it make you angry because we could all be living like that if he hadn't dropped the ball. Uh, but Adam gave his authority over to Satan. He was deceived. He gave it away in the garden. But Jesus, now bear in mind, God comes in this world in the flesh. That's why Jesus was born. He had to come in the flesh because, you get it? Jesus in the flesh came and took the authority that Adam gave away back. He took the keys of death, hell, and the grave. Jesus has made this authority available to us again. This word works. We have the authority. If we decree and declare this word, it works works it works it works it works it works if you really want it to work and work quick go back to psalms 91 and learn to do this one thing dwell 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 in the secret place dwell in the shelter Dwell in his tabernacle with him. Oh man, you can't do that. That's all. Yeah, you can do what you want to do. You can do what you want to do. You can get as much of God as you want. But it's up to you. How much do you want? How much do you want? I know I want more than what I got. I do. I want more than what I got. And I am not lost by any stretch of the imagination. I just want more. I just want more. Learn to dwell. Dwell, dwell, 
well. Pastor Terry, am I all right on time? I'm getting close. Mark 11, 22 through 24. You can mark that down. You can write it down. I'm going to try to read it real quick. Mm. And Jesus answering saith unto them, Have faith in God. For verily or truly I say unto you, that whosoever shall say to this mountain, whatever your mountain is, debt, sickness, disease, family problems, lack, what whoever says, what whoever, whoever, whosoever shall say. Whosoever means whosoever, you know, whosoever shall say to this mountain, Be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt, because we know that if you live in doubt, you can't live in doubt and have faith at the same time because James says that you know, you're double-minded and then you're not going to get anywhere. Yeah. If you doubt in your heart, but shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass, you shall have what? You shall have whatsoever. You shall have whatsoever he said. Therefore I say unto you that whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. And that goes on. You can go to Matthew 21, verses 19 through 21. You can add that in there. And, but the bottom line, guys, is this right here. If you don't have what this book says you can have, start checking it. And I'll promise you that 10 times out of 10, you're going to find the problems on this side of the fence and not on his side. But you've got to get to a point where you say, okay, Lord, what have I done? What, where did I miss it? Whoa. I know I did. You know, so do I need to repent? Do I need to apologize? I've done a lot of repenting and a lot of apologizing last year. Um, <laughs> you know, you're going down the road and it's like, do you remember so and so and so and so? And I'm like, oh. Golly, you know, I, <laughs> repent, repent and apologize. If you don't have what this word promises us, promises us that we can have, here's what you got to do. Ask why, but make sure you want to know because <laughs> you're going to find out. Where did I miss it, Lord? And the Lord's going to show you. There are spiritual laws that cannot be violated. This book is a spiritual law. He cannot go against his word. What he said is this word. I don't. It don't make any difference whether you believe it or not. Right. It's real. Yeah. And sad thing is, some people are going to find out when it's too late. When you're standing before him with all the color gone from your face, your mouth, your chin on the ground, and your eyes big as basketball, saying, "Oh my God, it's real." And it's too late then. Right. It's too late at that point. It's too late. So tonight, I want to say this to you. We need to release the authority of the kingdom in our lives, in our businesses, in our churches, and what we have going on. Release the authority of the kingdom that's in us so he has an open channel to flow. And the title of the message is Live Your Life on purpose Amen. this is your purpose Amen. Pastor Terry Hallelujah. thank you buddy good word good word appreciate that for sure um, Lord was kind of speaking to me about you guys while you're sitting here, and you guys are looking for something real. And this is real. Amen. This is real. You know, the Lord, <laughs> in, you know, when uh, you went to uh, Mark 11, 22, and the Word says, uh, have faith in God or have the faith of God, you know, you can't have the faith of God or in God unless you know what His Word says because the Bible says, Faith comes from hearing and hearing from the Word of God. 
And so there's there's some things that are about to begin to transform if you guys will push in. Mm-hmm. In your life, there's been some things you've, you've been wanting to happen. Been some hurt. God's going to take care of that. Uh, there's going to be some restoration that's going to come. You know, when you're talking about uh, repenting, uh, Reverend Bobby, uh, a lot of people have preached that that word repent means to turn away from sin. And while that has somewhat of the meaning of it, it's really not the true meaning of it. Because if that be the case, when Moses was on the mount with God and Israel, he was up there for 40 days, and while he was up there, Israel went crazy and, you know, they made the calf and started worshiping other gods. And uh, you need that? Thank you, sir. And uh, when that happened, uh, God said, I'll destroy them. and said, I'll raise up a whole new group of people for you. And um, Moses said, well, if you're going to do that, thank God for an intercessor. If you're going to do that, then just go ahead and destroy me too. And um, then he had a few more words with him. And it says, and God relented. But the word there really is the same word as repent because people, because of the definition that they have there, they think that, you know, God can't repent because there's no sin. But what the word really means is a change of mind. Because, see, that if we change the mind, then we go a different direction. You can change his mind pretty easy, can't you? Go ahead. Just hit, you can. Yeah, you can. And it's like, you know, because you'd be wanting to go this one direction. and so, say, well, man, I don't, you know, I don't think that's necessarily the way we need to go. And so you listen to her. I hope. <laughs> okay. Okay. Sometimes. Sometimes. You just be like the rest of us. Sometimes, right? Now, if you be like me, you're going to find out that, you need to listen a whole lot more. Hey, Pastor, baby, love you. And uh, somebody want to cut that off? No, <laughs> I'm playing. But anyway, I just want you to know that there there are some things that because you've you've made a step in a direction, God will meet you, and He will take you. You take one step, and He's going to take ten. There, there's man I, when. <laughs> When I got baptized in the Holy Ghost, um, the the little lady that was sitting on the left hand side of you over there, Pastor Sandra, okay, you know she's just a little ball of fire. She's dynamite, man. She's there's an atomic bomb built up in that woman of God, and uh, she was preaching that night forty years ago, and uh, she said somebody in here needs to get baptized in the Holy Ghost. Well, I didn't know nothing about that. I I, I was raised in the in a Baptist church, and when they talk about baptism, I think, you know, it's get water and you get wet. But that wasn't what she was talking about. She was talking about something that was so much more powerful. And I know that night, I, I after I let go of the chair, I was holding in, my knuckles were white. I, seriously, I was, I was hanging on that thing. I know she's talking to me. And I just, I took one step out. And the next thing I know, I was standing up in front of her, and she was laying hands on me, and the power of God, I mean, the fire of God hit me from the top of my head to the soles of my feet. Changed my life. Filled me full of joy. And so I'm just going to encourage you guys to just really just push into the things of God. And um, right now, there's, there, like I said, you've been, you've been looking, you've been thinking. And uh, I want you to know it's, it's the most real thing you will ever experience. I don't know your background. I'll be honest with you, I don't know I don't know anything about you. Except for I know you're good with uh you know, you, you you're handy is what I hear. So you do you do good work and that's you know, that's a good thing. So uh I know you're good people, but I, I will share this with you. The Lord sh- showed me Sunday night. Our purpose, the Lord tells us to enter into his rest. And I never really thought about it, but we were praying for uh, someone, and the Lord just told me what rest is. And, you know, he gives me acronyms sometimes, and rest is receiving everything supplied today. Amen. If we receive everything that he supplied for us today, then we, we're at rest. You know what I'm saying? That little baby doesn't worry about anything. 
because when he starts crying, you're trying to figure out what does he need. Because if he's crying, he's hurt, he's hungry, something's happening. And so you figure out what that is and you make sure it's supplied to him. That's God. Amen. Amen. So good word. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to get off on that. I just want you to know it's real. It's real. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Heavenly Father, we're just so thankful for this night. Thank you for the word that you you gave to uh, Reverend Bobby, Pastor Bobby, anointed Bobby. And Lord, we just thank you that that word will penetrate into our hearts. Lord, I thank you for everything that you're doing. Thank you for the season that we're in. That Father, your power will manifest in our lives. And everyone will be able to see the glory of the Lord in our life. And we'll be drawn to you. And so, Father, we give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. In the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody said? Amen. Amen. Love you guys. Thank you for being here. I, I, you're going to miss me for just a minute. I don't have nobody to cut that off, so I'm going to be walking around behind there to turn you off. So have a blessed week. Remember, we won't be here next uh, Wednesday night.